Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put some primer on this guy here. What we're building here is the air chamber itself. So I've got that in there. Go ahead and do the inside with a little sleeve here. If this guy goes onto the inside, we're going to do him as well. And then lastly, we're going to put it on the inside of our three, three inch sleeve here. So now back to our glue. Glue the inside of this. Go ahead and twist this into place. Got a nice good seal there. You can see how this is coming out. This is the chamber that we're building. This is what holds the air to fire it. Throw a little bit of glue on this guy here. And this just slides into here. A little twist on there. Push it into place. There you have it. So now our air chamber is finished. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to drill a hole here for the air nozzle and we're going to drill a hole here for our pressure valve so we can see how much pressure we have. So we're going to go back over to the drill press and you can do this while the glue is setting up, it won't hurt it. I like to use a pipe clamp to hold it into place so we don't get anything jumping around on us. I'll just get it to where it's lined up nice and nice and square. Clamp it down. And just take your time. Drill a nice smooth hole in here. Slow even pressure. We're going to flip it around. And we're going to do one more hole here. We're going to keep it as lined up as possible. And as you can see, we've got two perfectly drilled holes here. Now, with our Schrader valve, you can put it in either hole, it doesn't matter. You can put it in this hole. You can put it in this hole. It doesn't matter whatever you want to do with it. I tend to put it in the back. I'm going to grab my 7 16 wrench. And this thing will create its own threads as you put it in. Just put it in nice and smooth. Don't over tighten it. There you have it, there's your filler valve. We'll go ahead and bust out our pressure gauge. Same thing with the pressure gauge, line it up. And this one you can just twist in by hand. Get it started. Now once it becomes kind of thick, the turn on your hand, you don't want to overdo it. Grab your 9 16 again and just finish screwing it in. When you start getting down towards the bottom, what I do is I lift it up, depending on if you're left handed or right handed, and I want to screw this thing in so that the, uh, the bottom of the, the thing straight up and down like that so you can see the finished product I'm holding it on my shoulder I'll be able to read this gauge some people put the gauge in upside down so when you're filling it with air you can look at it this way whatever whatever works for you so there's our air chamber it's all ready to go 
Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in our closed nipple here. We're going to put in our sprinkler valve. Now the way these sprinkler valves are done, it's got a 45 degree angle thing here. It's an easy way to remember the airflow goes that way. If you look at the bottom of it, there's an arrow that shows you the airflow. So since this thing is where the air is and it's going to be shooting out the barrel, we're going to want the 45 degree angle facing away from it. So we're just going to screw that one on there. And you can just put these on hand tight. I don't glue this in case I ever want to put a new, new valve on. Put our closed nipple on this end. This piece screws right on here. And then what we can do is we're going to screw this piece onto the barrel, but first we're going to glue this one on here. This you don't have to really swab the glue on a whole lot because there's once the air passes through this part, it's already on its way out the barrel, so it doesn't really need to hold any air. It's such a split second. I just put enough in there that it'll lock it into place. Let me go ahead and pop this off real quick. And I'll just push that in there. So this piece is what holds the barrel together. So now we're going to take the barrel and the barrel just screws into the end. Now the final piece is going to be our trigger assembly. You can get these at Home Depot. That's where I get mine. So there's our trigger assembly. We want our trigger facing forward naturally. And we just screw that onto our nipple. Make sure it's facing forward. Line all this stuff up, tighten it up as tight as you want to have it. You gotta remember, don't glue this because you can interchange your barrels. So you can have a potato cannon, golf ball cannon, and your tennis ball cannon. And it all works off one thing. But there's your finished product, MGB. 2.5 golf ball cannon. This is Mick from American Cannon saying thanks for watching.